attack at burn. Imagination Station. Chapter 1. To save Albert, I need a Viking sunstone before the new moon or Lord Darkrun will lock him inside the tower. Chapter 4. The Boar. All of a sudden there was a loud crack. The metal bars in the doorway moved upward. The man stood in the doorway behind the bars. He was holding a long whip. He wore a short sleeve tunic just like Beth's. A golden bird. Mark seemed to be listening to something. He looked toward the trees. We're not alone, he whispered. Chapter 7 The Barbin. Suddenly, a man stepped out of the woods. He was large with wild brown hair. His beard was just as wild. I smelled the meat, the man said. I want some. His voice was low and raspy. You're welcome to it, Tantamon said. I'm not, the man said. You don't look like Roman. I'm not, the man said. He swept at a piece of rabbit bone. He would call me a barbin. Oh, I am a Christian. You have come far from your home, the man said. I was captured by Roman soldiers for... Patrick remembered that I had been hidden. Under his robe. Was this the man Mr. Whitaker mentioned? Should he offer the armband to him? Maybe it would keep them from being harmed. As you wish. Tesman looked behind the log. He picked up a small sack that had been hidden. The barber moved quickly. He grabbed the sack from the monk. Everything inside it fell out. Something shiny glanced against the ground. It was a large silver cup. The barber picked up the cup. You call this worthless? He asked. This coin says great fuel. Tower? Could it be worse than knowing that Beth is in the hands of? A Roman soldier? Chapter 10, Vampire. A large iron door in one of the stone walls opened. A large Roman soldier came through. Your Highness, the man said. He had a deep, booming voice. He pounded a fish against his chest. Then, as the soldier came closer, he bowed, I am at your service. Greetings, Gannon, said him. I am glad you are here. Please put this girl in prison. There's pictures. I would chain you up myself. You are a rude little girl, but today I will spare you. Thank you, your and premise. He's so young, Patrick said. I thought emperors were old. Chapter 10, the car. I lost him. Suddenly strong hands cried, Patrick, get back, a soldier shouted. He lifted Patrick off the ground. Patrick saw soldier's face. It was the same soldier who had carried Beth away. The same bearded and moustache. Same angry eyes. You, the soldier said, trying to keep, trying to help this 
slavery escape again. Escape, Patrick said, but I wasn't. I warned you before, the soldier said. He dragged Patrick away from the birdcage. Let him go, Beth shouted. I wasn't doing anything, Patrick said. The soldier took Patrick further back in the pride. Then the soldier picked him up, threw him into a wood cart. See how you like living life with the enemies of Rome, the soldier said. Patrick fell onto the bottom of the cart. His face was in the mud and straw. Soldiers found me again. Is that how the Emperor got the cup? Petra asked. Edric scrolled. I wondered what they would do with it, he said. Petra looked around the other people in the cup were dressed in rags. He looked sad and tired. What's happening, Petra asked Edric. Where are we going? To please the crowds and the exterior. To die for the glory of Rome. Chapter 11. The games began. A guard unlocked the birdcage door, climbed in on one of his soldiers. Soldiers, they balanced on the poles. Elephants and zebras, they roared and Trumbled. An elephant roared back. Its front legs came down on two men. Beth feared the slaves were badly hurt or even dead. Bravo! That's more like it, a man in the crowd shared the people. Beth turned away from the emperor. She moved to the wall behind the seating area. Beth, a voice called to her. She looked up, a man in a brown robe. She was preparing over the wall. Chapter 12, The Monk's Message. Are you a monk? Beth asked the man. I am Thomas, he said. I saw you when the soldier picked you up. Will you deliver a message to the emperor? Yes, she said. Ask him if a, he is a Christian, said the monk. Okay, she said. And then what to most told her what to say? Beth frowned. He won't like it, so she said. Go the emperor. Must be Christian. In the emperor's box was what are you guys for? Nice to the emperor. A woman shouted, He's going to attack the emperor. Patrick swung his legs to the top of the netting. Climbed it like a ladder and crawled toward Beth. The monks pulled Patrick into the emperor's box. The monk hugged the boy. There were tears in the monk's eyes. Beth also hugged Patrick and this one. And this one. Beth also. And this one. Tommy didn't produce it is a small red chicken. Patrick, the words were drawn. Stop, Vampire Shad. The boy is with me. The guard stepped back. Vampire looked as if he might say something else. Prisoner let out a heartbreaking cry. The man would leave a thumbs 
down meant he would die. So Manish turned to the emperor. He said, may I? He wished to decide the man's fate. The emperor asked, tell me nod. If it pleases you, he said. Ernest nodded for Timothy to step forward. Ernest moved to the edge of Emperor's box, raised his hand. His thumb was up. In the name of Jesus, who shed his blood. Thus, the monk said, don't take pleasure in this bloodshed. Stop in the name of Christ, stop. There was a pause. Everyone was silent. The prisoners in the room were still. And men in the crowd began to shout, Kill, kill, kill. Beth colored her ears as the voices grew louder. Beth cried out, No! When this came to the edge, he waved his arms to the crowd. Stop, he shouted. No more killing. But the crowd ignored the emperor. They adjunct. Kill, kill, kill. Thomas took the cup. He looked at it sadly. How can I offer this to the bishop? He asked quietly. He looked at Patrick. You take it to remember what has happened here. Red-faced men and women pressed toward the emperor's box. They shook their fists and to manage was for him for games. Down the monk! One man shouted. Throw him in with the prisoners, another man screamed. The emperor looked at the moose. You must leave, he said. They'll tear you to pieces. I'm not afraid of death, monk said. The moose nodded to a guard. I stepped to, over to the moose. The moose understood. He gave a small smile to the children. God be with you. He said, just then a giant breeze swept through the box. The imagination station appeared. The door opened with a swoosh. The roar of the crowd stopped all at once. Everyone and everything seemed to freeze in place. This is new, Patrick said. What was happening? A tall knight stepped out of the imagination station. Colonel Chain, he'll understand. The knight entered into the machine. Beth wondered about Albert. As she climbed into the imagination station, Patrick remembered the mystery's law. Dark Friends Tower as the door closed. Next adventure, the Imagination Station door opened, letting light. Mr. Whitaker land in interview. Welcome back, he said. The two cousins gazed at him. Mr. Whitaker raised an arrow. Did you find the cup? Patrick lifted the silver coat. Here it is, he said. Patrick said, but what about the night, Beth asked. What do you mean, Mr. Wilker asked. An English knight appeared with the imagination station. He helped us out when we were in Greenland. Mr. Wilker thought about it for a moment. I have some ideas, he said, but we'll talk about it later. Meanwhile, you should get some rest. We have a big day tomorrow. We do, Beth asked. 
What are we going to do? asked Patrick. You're going to China to find the golden tablet of Kung Chang, Mr. Wood said. Any comments or questions below?